I will never forget running into a lady in, a, in the grocery store, and I asked her, I said, I haven't seen you in church in a long time. And she says, well, Father, I don't go to church anymore. And I said, why? And she says, well, you know, I don't want to go to church anymore because it's full of hypocrites. And I said, well, don't worry. There's always room for one more. <laughs> we are all sinners, imperfect people. The whole notion of dysfunctional families is something that I absolutely abhor because it would mean that there are functional ones. Every family is messed up, has issues. And the church is no other because the church is a family. So just like your own family has issues, so does the family that is the church, the community, the fellowship. The best definition of heaven for me is community. Heaven is community. Hell is isolation. The gospel today says Jesus did many things, many signs in the presence of his disciples. They're written in this book. But many others are not written in this book. That's why we are Catholics. I want to remind you. You are Catholic. You are not Protestant. You don't believe in just the Bible. That's why we have the diary of St. Faustina, which is accepted by the church as inspired Revelation, other writings like the mystical writings of St. Teresa of Avila. I'm just giving you some examples here. The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis, considered to be the second Bible. There are other mystical writings, such as the visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich, who is a saint, on which Mel Gibson based the movie The Passion of the Christ, not just on the Passion as recounted in the Gospel of John, but also on her visions. And Anne Catherine Emmerich had visions of hell, and she says that you can't meet anybody in hell. Does that mean nobody's in hell? No. What it means is you can't meet anybody there. What does that mean? There's no encounter. There's no community. There's just isolation and loneliness. That's hell. And you don't have to die to experience it. Lots of people are in hell right now. That's why we gather together here. And that's why you have to gather together with others. We have become more and more individualistic and selfish in this country that is a Protestant country, but you are Catholic. The word Catholic means universal, coming together. Protestants say it's about your personal relationship with Jesus, your own Lord and Savior. 
We don't believe in that. It's not about my own relationship with Jesus. That's easy. It's harder to gather together and say it's about my relationship with Jesus and other people because people hurt you. They do bad things to you. That's tough. And yet, that's what we are called to do. For us, it's not about our relationship with Jesus. It's about our relationship with Jesus and each other. You cannot do Christianity alone. By yourself. You need community. Our American culture is becoming more and more isolating and individualistic. The patron saint of America is John Wayne. We are the wealthiest culture the world has ever known. And stop with this stuff about, you know, that we're poor and that we lack things. Try to give somebody something, you know, like uh, canned food. They'll leave it on the doorstep, you know. We can't give away enough money in this country. Huh? Why are so many people living in tents and choosing the homeless life? Because they, they, they form communities. Many of them don't want to leave that, the, the community that is formed there. In, in many of these cities, they keep throwing millions and millions to try to get people to leave this type of lifestyle, but they don't want to because they form a community. They're not alone. Hmm? I talk with a lot of people who are homeless. Can't solve it with money. Can't. We are the wealthiest culture the world has ever known, and yet we cannot produce enough antidepressants. The number one cause of death today is suicide. We are losing the battle to make lifetime commitments. Could it be that we are missing something crucial from our culture and way of life? That crucial aspect of life is described in the first reading today, which you did not pay attention to because you were thinking about something else from the Acts of the Apostles. You see, the first Christians weren't just believers. Not enough to be a believer. The devil is a believer too, you know. He knows the creed better than you do. And so what? The first Christians weren't just believers. They were belongers. Huh? There's a concept that I came up with this week. Not just to be a believer, but a belonger. Are you a belonger or are you just a believer? That's the difference between Catholicism and Protestantism. You know, we have to belong. Not me and Jesus, but me, Jesus, and the community. This is what we need to be turned into. Believers who are belongers. To create a sense of belonging. A sense of community. A sense that someone wants you. Waits for you. Like Father Adam waits for you every single week. Huh? Isn't that nice? Of course, other people here, you know, when we see each other, hmm, they tried to take that away from us this past year. No. That someone longs for you, huh? that you are not alone. 
Mm -hmm. Thank God for the Supreme Court that we can gather here. Otherwise, we'd probably still be shut down. Huh? The liquor stores can be open. Huh? <laughs> the casinos, full. But no, you can't go to church, right? No, 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 no. Can't gather together. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Maybe I, I need... I, I, I need to measure my words a little bit more. Uh, the first Christians shared their lives together. Read the Acts of the Apostles. We are in the 50 days of Easter right now where we should all be reading the Acts of the Apostles. The first thing they did when they arrived in a town to announce the gospel was to create a community. And the word Church means community, not a building. In Europe, they have big buildings, you know, beautiful buildings. But they don't have no community. That's why they're turning them into bars. I went to one once in, uh, in Prague, former church building. You know, now it's a restaurant and bar. Uh-huh. Where the altar was, that's where they served the cocktails. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself created a community. The twelve together, prayed together, and ate together. That's why we, I can't wait for our breakfast to come back. You know, the, the, the nights, hello, okay? Because we need to do that. You know, those donuts after church are just as important, you know. Huh? Two by two, Jesus sends them out. Never in isolation, never alone. This is why Thomas has a problem in today's gospel, recognizing Jesus. Did you notice that? Or again, you were asleep still. Huh? Thomas has a problem believing. Why? On the evening of the first Easter Sunday, the disciples, the Bible tells us today, were gathered together, and it was there in the midst of the community when Jesus appears to them, when they are together. He appears when they are together. Isn't that what Jesus said? Where two or three are gathered in my name. Not where one, huh? There I am in their midst. The disciples then rejoiced. That's why I tell you jokes. Because they rejoiced. They were happy when they were together. Huh? They laughed. They drank. It's wine, you know. And ate. And danced. That's why it's nice to have parties in church, isn't it? You know, we love parties. We have a nice hall. Oh, huh? that's great. Hmm? Thomas doesn't believe because he isn't there with the community. He is disconnected from the community. He is not with the church. He's somewhere alone and doesn't believe. When you are alone, faith doesn't hit you. Depression does. He only comes to believe the following Sunday, which is what we're celebrating today. He only gets faith when he is gathered together with the disciples in community. Because to have faith, it isn't enough to believe. You have to belong. In order to have faith, you have to move from being a believer to becoming a believing belonger. I, I coined that and I absolutely love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. A believing belonger. The Holy Spirit hit me this week like you haven't, you have no idea. I start on Monday preparing of what I'm going to tell you on Sunday. It just hit, I don't even remember what day it was, okay? A believing belonger. When I bless you, I do so placing you in a family in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
What is that? That's a family, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You get it? You know, I'm saying, I want you to be in a family, folks. You know, brothers and sisters with one Father of all. Even if you had a family of, of one, you, it would still be imperfect because we are all imperfect. We're all sinners. So we need to stop looking for a perfect family or a perfect community because there is none. We just need to accept each other as we are, as imperfect as we are. You know, some people sometimes complain and say, oh, he said this, he said that. Yeah, you know, well, I'm imperfect too, you know. You have to accept me as I am, okay? That I make mistakes, I accept you, you know. Huh? You know why you should put up with your husband? You want to know why? You want to know why you need to put up with your husband? Because he puts up with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's that? why you have to put up with me too, you know, because I put up with all of you. <laughs> and now God gives all of us a great, God always gives us great gifts. I have so much more to tell you, but I have to go to say Mass in Middletown. <laughs>